About a month ago, I received a comment suggesting I take a look at budget phones, like the Galaxy A71. I don't have an A71, but I do have a Galaxy A70. And it is a relatively affordable repair, as well as a phone. I also recently passed 200 subscribers, so thank you to all of you out there. Let's get started by removing these 14 Phillips head screws. Don't forget the SIM tray. There's a small split between the screen frame and the plastic mid-frame. Using a metal pry tool, I'll work my way around the edges, listening for a satisfying pop of that plastic tab. Removing the mid-frame reveals a main and sub board connected by a very wavy ribbon cable. Disconnecting the battery is pretty important. Then separating our mother and daughter boards by unplugging the large ribbon. I'll unplug the digitizer and OLED ribbon from the port. Yeah, this is a weird one. The display connects to the charging daughter board, then goes up to the main board. Let's take a look at this cool little optical fingerprint reader. It's essentially a tiny camera that can see through the semi-transparent OLED layer of the screen to take a picture of your fingerprint. Neat. Time to remove the antenna from the little trench in the frame. Then I'll take out the small daughter board. It has no screws, just a small layer of adhesive below. There's a water damage indicator hiding down here. There's a single black Phillips head screw that holds the main board in place. This is to keep pressure between the volume and power buttons and the main board. This main section is pretty standard, nothing too flashy here other than the triple camera array. Nice to still see expandable storage on Samsung's budget-friendly devices. I'll grab the new frame and start moving a few things over. There are a couple components left in the old frame like the ear speaker and vibrate motor. Starting with the charging board followed by this tiny little fingerprint scanner and two Phillips screws that hold it in place. Samsung usually has tiny pry points cut into the frame for removing the modular components. This is a huge benefit for anybody wanting to repair their own device safely and effectively. I'll peel off some of these plastic protectors from the thermal pads, camera covers, and SIM tray water resistant barrier before moving over to the other pieces. I'll drop the main board into its new home and replace the single black board screw. Routing the antenna properly is important for when you reinstall the mid frame, it can get pinched if it's out of the trench. The battery is a pain to remove. That's all I can really say about it. There's a ton of adhesive holding it in place, and it requires a lot of prying to remove. Heat can help, and alcohol does soften the glue, but safe battery removal is pretty important for the rest of your device. Cool. I'm going to add just the right amount of adhesive to the new frame. In all honesty, this amount is slightly overkill anyway. The battery is held in by many, many other board components. Finally connecting the digitizer and OLED to the daughter board and reinstalling the main sub ribbon connector. After reconnecting the battery, it's time to reinstall the mid-frame. It clips back into place, though not as satisfyingly as removing it was. Now we have 14 screws to replace. I'll coat the edges in tape primer for a good bond. Back panel lost a good amount of its adhesive in the removal process. I'll replace the critical areas, but unfortunately there won't be any water or dust resistance to this device. Finally, with everything reassembled, and the SIM card reinserted, 
I'll power on the device and make sure everything works before releasing it. Be sure to let me know in the comments what devices you'd like to see repaired on my channel. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.